Welcome to the first, maybe only episode of Critical Thinking. On this episode, we'll look at the pull-up, how you can get your very first pull-up, how you can get better at them, and we'll also discuss the kipping pull-up as well. Most fitness enthusiasts have seen the trademark movement of CrossFit, the kipping pull-up. Some might call it a spasmic attempt at a gymnastics movement and call out, do some real pull-ups. But often, topics are not as clear cut as that and those critics need some critical thinking. First of all, a disclaimer. I highly suggest to be able to do at least a few strict pull-ups before engaging in any kipping practice. So why would people want to do this kipping business? Well, it allows for a greater amount of volume to be done in a pulling workout without overtaxing the muscles involved. Now, it might seem a little bit counterintuitive because you're training, but you're making your training easier why not make it harder? If you're trying to get 50 or more pull-ups in a very short amount of time with other similar pulling or rowing motions, this will allow you to get the work done. Plus, an efficient and strong kip will allow some people tr to transition easier into harder movements such as the chest to bar or even the muscle up. It goes without saying, if you're able to complete a workout within a reasonable amount of time without doing a kip and sticking purely to strict pull-ups, by all means, do that. And if about the kip and pull-up. Let's take a look at the strict form pull-up and what it should look like. You should always start with the arm straight, like a dead hang, but the shoulders slightly pulled down, so you're not just kind of like hanging for your life type of deal. However, don't don't exaggerate this position. You don't you don't need to impress anyone with, with your scapular pulling power. Once you start pulling yourself up, the main thing is to think about bringing the elbows back as you pull the bar down. This will allow a greater range of motion, plus it will allow your upper back muscles to activate to a greater extent, which is very important when you're doing any kind of pull work. The movement should end with the bar either touching your clavicles or coming in contact with your neck. For those who have limited shoulder mobility or kind of like a slouched forward shoulder position, this might seem impossible at first, so you might have to work on your mobility. Once you're at the top, the rep is finished by going down into a controlled descent before engaging with your next rep. Assuming you have taken care of any mobility or postural issues, the negative pull-up is going to be one of your greatest tools in achieving your first pull-up. Get to the top by either jumping off a box or get a friend to help you. Once you're hanging with the bar either touching your neck or your clavicle, then it's time to start the descent by resisting the weight of your body. The key word is slowly, meaning it should take you about 3 to 10 seconds to go from the top of the movement and finish again with the arms fully extended but with the shoulders still engaged. Make sure the 3 to 10 second is spread out equally through the full range of motion. If you're just starting out, try spending at least one second at the top, one second in the middle, and then one second at the bottom just before the arms lock out. So that is considered a three second hold. The mistake that most beginners tend to make is they spend way too much time in the upper portion, but not enough time at the bottom portion. So they kind of start here and then once they get to about 90 degrees, they just drop like a rock. So make sure it's an even and distributed effort throughout the whole range. Let's say you did that once, three seconds, that's considered as one repetition. How many repetitions or sets should I do? I would suggest to do about one to five negative repetitions per set with total hanging time anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds per set. And you want that 10 to 15 seconds to add up to about 30 to 60 throughout all the sets you do. Now, doing one minute when you start out across four or even five sets might seem close to impossible. Feels like your biceps are ripping out, feels like your arms are starting to get destroyed. But as long as you progressively get to a minute, then that's really all that matters in the end. Let's use the same example we started with. A beginner doing one second at the top, one second in the middle, and then one second at the bottom, more or less, with traveling time in between 
those angles. So that is a total of three seconds. And let's say we do that for three reps. So it's three times three, that's nine. So you have a total of hanging time of nine seconds per set. Let's say you do that for about three to four total sets, which is gonna add up to 27 to about 36 seconds. This might seem like it's not much, but honestly, for someone who's just beginning pulling training, this is way more than enough. This is all you need to start building a solid foundation into a strict form pull-up. Be aware, any negative movement, including a negative pull-up, is known as an eccentric movement. Basically, an eccentric movement is somewhere where you resist the load instead of accelerating the load. The great thing about eccentric movements is that it allows you to lift heavier loads than if you were purely trying to do a concentric movement, for example, a full strict pull-up. However, be aware, eccentric movements are way more destructive for your muscle fibers than concentric movements. It might take you a little bit more time to fully recover from an eccentric type workout, and you might feel a lot more sore during your recovery phase. The reason I'm bringing this up is you don't wanna go overboard. Like I said, if you do three times three for three to four sets, which is about 27 to 36 seconds of hanging time, that is enough. You will feel the consequences of it. So where do you go from there? Let's say that was your first pull-up session, your negative pull-up session. It lasted 27 to 36 seconds of total hang time. You're happy, you're amazed, this is great. You feel like a superhero. So where do you go from there? What do you do for your next session? So if we stick with the same example, and let's say I did three sets. Your next workout, you can add an extra set, so that's an extra nine seconds. Now I know some people are overachievers. They wanna get their strict pull up tomorrow. It doesn't matter what's the punishment is gonna be. They wanna get it in, right? But be careful. Like I said, eccentric movements are very destructive on your muscle fibers. If you're someone who's active, you're probably not just working on a pull-up or negative pull-ups. So if you're doing any type of rowing, it could be bent over rows, inverted rows, upright rows, it could be even rowing on a rowing machine, then that will affect the overall stimulus your body gets. And it could limit how quickly you progress. So try to keep those things in check. And if you feel like you're not progressing enough, just need, make sure you're not overdoing it in these other fields. When, when will I be able to do my first strict pull-up? As you progress through the negatives, you'll reach a certain point where you will be able to do a single negative rep for about 10 seconds. At this point, a good portion of people should be able to do a full strict form pull-up for at least one rep. If you're still not able to do a full strict pull-up, and this is not including mobility or postural issues, then you can add a chain belt to the mix where you can attach a small plate, or you can hold a dumbbell in between your legs or your feet. I wouldn't go over 10 pounds if you're working on your negatives and you still haven't achieved your first strict pull-up. Make sure you don't sacrifice any range of motion in favor of this increased weight. Unless you're working on partial movements, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Honestly, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do a strict form pull-up if you're able to do a negative pull-up with an extra 10 pounds on your body. I got my first three to five strict pull-ups. What, what do I do from now? There are very simple programs that will allow you to get to five strict pull-ups in a relatively short amount of time if you're able to do at least three reps. If you're not able to do at least three, let's say you can only do one or two, then you might have to stick to negatives, but start incorporating at least one rep here and there in your pull-up sessions. So for example, you can do one full strict pull-up, then you can do maybe one negative with 10 pounds, and then you can take off those 10 pounds and do one more rep, one more negative rep of 10 seconds. Just make sure you keep increasing your total volume of training per session. At this point, you might run into the issue of not being able to do all your reps with the full range. So for example, you do three, three reps, they look clean, very nice, amazing, everyone's applauding you. But once you get to the last two reps, 
you're not able to pull it all the way up so you kind of get your chin and you start like waving back and forth and your 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 chin is kind of coming over the bar but the bar is coming nowhere close to your neck so what do you do in that case you can just work on partial holds or partial pull-ups so in the same scenario which is very common not being able to do a full pull-up where it touches your neck you can just go down to about a certain extent where you feel strong and then pull up where you feel weak strong right you just do your reps like that and you can accumulate some volume also you can do holds so let's say i'm very weak uh, somewhere between my neck and my clavicle just holding the bar in that position i'm having a hard time go into that position again jump up or get someone to help you up and hold it hold it about three to five seconds if your issue is mostly at the bottom you can do what are known as scapular pull-ups scapular pull-ups are quite simple you start in the dead hang so your shoulders are touching your ears more or less and then you just pull your shoulders down a little bit again this is not an arm movement so notice my arm stays straight point it up and down so i'm not bending the arm at all i do <laughs> i know some people are gonna call you out they're gonna see you from the corner of the gym and they're gonna say look at this city what what is he even doing that's not how we do pull-ups around here just ignore those people keep doing what you need to do to get to where you need to go so once you reach your first five to seven strict form pull-ups things can get a little bit more interesting your options basically open up you can start on working on different parameters of the pull -up. the three main options are you can work on your endurance and increase the total amount of strict pull-ups you can do so let's say you want to be able to do 15 to 20 strict pull-ups you can go do that also, you can start introducing weight to your strict form pull-ups. It's the same thing as the negatives, but basically you can add more and more weight and work on the movement. But again, as the negatives, make sure it does not compromise your range of motion. Finally, you can start doing what are known as explosive pull-ups. Explosive pull-up is basically like a regular pull-up, except you're, instead of bringing the bar to the clavicle, you can start bringing it lower and lower and lower eventually to your sternum and then just above the belly button and then to the hips and then who knows I don't know you know it's like what is this guy doing is this a pull up chest bar I don't know it looks like a muscle up oh, I'm not sure now I know some people are gonna wonder what is the best out of those three options and honestly it's gonna depend on why you started doing pull ups and what you want out of them in my opinion, it's always a good idea to work a little bit on all three. Doing weighted pull-ups in an explosive manner will benefit your weighted pull-ups, of course, but also your explosive pull-ups and to a certain extent, your endurance to perform a high, high amount of reps. The reason I'm mentioning this is because if you purely work on endurance, it won't necessarily improve the two other factors, the weight and the explosive, and if you work really on the explosive it can increase your weighted pull-up but it won't necessarily increase your endurance if you get to this point you'll probably notice that progress tends to slow down and that is normal you've gone past your beginner phase uh, and you're in your intermediate phase like most gymnastic movements or weightlifting movements things start to slow down after the initial beginners phase so if you purely work on explosive weighted pull-ups you might want to take a week where you don't add any weight and you just work on some endurance or purely body weight explosive pull-ups. In terms of reps and sets, what I prefer to do, so for the weighted pull-ups, I'll do anywhere between three to 10 reps for three to five sets. For the explosive pull-ups, I'll do three to five reps, so a lot less. Again, just focusing on keeping the movement nice and explosive. And I'll do that for anywhere between three to five sets. So if, if I feel like I'm starting to lose height on the bar, I'll stop. If you want to work on your endurance, then you want to work up to about 10 reps and then do that anywhere from 10 to 25 reps for two to four sets. With enough consistent dedication to these three variants of the pull-ups, you'll quickly find yourself doing chest to bars and even muscle-ups with a lot more ease. So. Let's go back to where we initially started this conversation, the kipping pull-up. I want to discuss the two main issues I've seen people run into the kipping pull-up. 
First of all, the body being a magnificent machine, it will adapt to any stimulus that you put on it. Unfortunately, this applies to progression and regression. In other words, if you don't use it, you lose it. But what I mean by that, if you practice a limited range pull-up or you stop practicing your weighted pull-ups, then you will adapt to that limitation, either in range or intensity. Even if you've been doing strict form pull-ups, explosive and weighted for a certain amount of time. The reason I bring this up is because I've witnessed people work on their strict form pull-ups, work on their range of motion, but then they kind of put that aside, go towards the kipping, and then purely dedicate their time to the kip. The kip being a very explosive movement it is a little bit easier than the pull-up if we we put technique aside of course let's say you were barely getting a chest to bar like one out of two days you're able to do a chest to bar and then you drop all form of strict pulling there's a, a, a chance that you might lose your chest to bar as well this is the reason why I think most crossfitters should add some type of strict pulling into their workout. Now, this is easier said than done when you already do a large volume of pulling outside of your strict practice. However, the extra strength and muscular development will allow you for a safer practice in your CrossFit sessions. Being strong or having proper technique does not guarantee you will not get injured. It only reduces the risk of injury. So even though the risk will be relatively lower, it does not mean that the possibility won't exist. And again, if you stop training any form of strict or explosive movements, then it will be harder for you to achieve your first chest bar or your first muscle up. It is still achievable with a more powerful and efficient kip, but this comes at a higher risk of injury. There's nothing more frustrating than taking one step forward to take two steps back. If you have proper training session and it's coupled with proper recovery, this should not be a problem for you. Just be mindful. The limiting factors are not going to be your muscles but your joints on how often and how hard you can train your pull-ups. I hope you learned something new today. Let me know what you thought about the video, if you agree, if you disagree. Also, if you have fitness topics that you want me to cover in the future, just drop a comment down below. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel or just like the video. Thank you to the three people who are still watching me and I'll see you guys next time.